The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Behold, now is the acceptable time, now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Our Lenten psalm is a portion of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you this day from God who created us, Jesus who redeemed us, and from the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen. G.K. Chesterton the noted English philosopher, lay theologian, and literary critic was once asked the question, why did you join the church so late in life? He answered, to get rid of my sins. That is a wonderful answer. It is still the solution for so many of the world's problems and the problems of people everywhere. So many of us know that there is something wrong something which must be set right at some point along the way, and we want someone to set things right. Yet many times we have the feeling that we cannot break through, cannot make the connection, cannot find the right formula. Harold Kushner, in his book, Who Needs God, tells about a television drama in which a man dies and finds himself standing in line. There is an usher telling people to go through one door or another. One door leads to heaven and one leads to hell. The man says to the usher, you mean I can choose either one? There is no judgment, no taking account of how I lived? The usher tells him that is right and to move along. The man says, but I want to confess. I want to come clean. I want to be judged. And the usher responds, we don't have time for that. Just choose a door and move along. The man chose the door to hell because he wanted to be judged. Yes, we know that we need someone or something out there beyond us to set things straight. At this point, enter Jesus of Nazareth. Behold the man who takes away sin. Some thought it was John the Baptist who came to do that, but John quickly let it be known that he was not the Christ. It would be another who would come after him. And so one day when John was preaching there in the wilderness along the Jordan River, he saw Jesus coming toward him. John knew that he was the one so John pointed to Jesus and said to the crowds, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In this season of Lent, as we think about Jesus heading toward Jerusalem and the cross, we know he came to do many things. One of those things he came to do was to restore a right relationship between God and God's children. John the Baptist knew it right away. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We see it happen in many places later as the story progresses. 
Jesus was announcing and granting God's forgiveness long before he even got to the cross. In today's reading, a paralytic in Capernaum was let down through the ceiling to where Jesus was preaching. And Jesus said to the man, your sins are forgiven and take up your mat and go home. We also see a woman who is about to be stoned to death for adultery. Jesus stopped the crowd and said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And even later in the night, Nicodemus came to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, You must be born anew. In all of these incidents, and in so many more, people are out for themselves. The whole point of the New Testament is that Jesus came to do for us that which none of us can do for ourselves. He came to take away the sin of the world. Look at some things involved in this. Jesus came to reveal a forgiving God. That is the nature of God. God forgives. It is so basic in the New Testament. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is something so very basic in our understanding of what God is like. It is why John referred to Jesus as being the Lamb of God. The Lamb was always sacrificed for the sins of the people. John said Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus came to reveal a forgiving God. He came to help us know who God is, that the children of God are loved and have a God who is willing to give up the only son for them to help them understand that love. Everything Jesus said and did points to this truth. We see it in his words, his attitudes, his deeds, and his actions. We see it being demonstrated ultimately in the cross as he gives up his own life for the sin of the world. It is in this that we learn that God forgives, not because of any sacrifice that we make, but because of the sacrifice Jesus himself was. We all need this, for we know none of us can handle the way we are by ourselves. We need the gracious forgiveness of God. We need this because we seek our own way and will instead of God's. We tend to put ourselves in God's place, thinking the world revolves around us and our own little wants and wishes. In our attempts to find a heaven, we wind up creating a hell, and we know that we need a forgiving God. One afternoon, when I was a child, some friends and I were having a snowball fight. Yes, there was a time when I knew the wonders of a winter with snow. We were all encamped along the street that ran past our house on either side. At a crucial point in the battle, a friend stood up and wafted a rather large snowball in our direction. But the force of his throw propelled the projectile right over our heads and straight through my bedroom window with a loud crash. We quickly called a truce and they all ran away. And I was left with the only thing I could think of, run back inside and quickly pull the shade down to hide the hole in the window pane. That didn't last too long, as it began to get quite cold in my room with a hole in the window, and I had to confess to my mother what had happened. Much to my surprise, she forgave me immediately with something she said along the lines of, perhaps you had better take better aim next time. She called my grandpa, who came over and replaced the window even before my father got home. I never forgot that. I was always amazed at her capacity to forgive. That is the way God is. And Jesus came to reveal a forgiving God. Jesus also came to create a transforming relationship. You see, something happens when God forgives. The day after John pointed to Jesus, John was with two of his disciples. 
Again, he saw Jesus, and again he said, Behold the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and round and said to them, What do you seek? And they answered, Rabbi, where are you staying? And that was the beginning of the band of disciples that Jesus had formed. They wanted to be with him, and he wanted them to follow him. Later on, toward the end of his mission, Jesus would say to all of them, No longer do I call you servants, now I call you my friends. That friendship that they shared reshaped the lives of the disciples. They had been rough men, weathered fishermen, shrewd businessmen, common men, sinners all. But the friendship of Jesus transformed them. Finally, when he went to the cross, they understood the words, greater love has no one than the one who lays down their life for their friends. The forgiveness of God that they saw in the cross and in the friendship that they had with Jesus transformed them, made them no longer just sinners, but sinners who had become saints. There was a power in the friendship that they shared with Jesus. That power made them want to be like Jesus. Jesus took their sin away and replaced it with forgiveness, love, compassion, mercy, and commitment, so much so that one day those who followed Jesus would even bear his name and would be called Christian. The digital television age has greatly enhanced the number of TV channels that you can get with an antenna. Right now, there are seven sub-channels on CBS, two on ABC, and one on NBC, among many others. When I first moved here to South Florida, my antenna got around 10 channels in the Fort Myers area, some better than others. But today, with a digital TV and a digital antenna, I can pick up over 45 channels in our area alone. One of them, Me TV, channel 26.2, runs many of my favorite reruns, including The Andy Griffith Show, each night at 8 and 8.30. During an episode not too long ago, Opie had been in a fight. Andy was trying to talk to him about it and how to get along with people. And Andy said to Opie, sometimes you have to give something and expect nothing. To which Opie replied, I did. I gave him a sock in the head. And Andy said, well, you have to do things out of charity. And Opie answered, I didn't charge him nothing for it. Andy came back with, you have to give just for the joy of it. And Opie replied, oh, I enjoyed it. Life will only work one way, and that is the way of Jesus. That is why the church is still important today. It holds before us the way of Jesus and involves us in a transforming relationship with him. Look finally at this. Jesus came to offer an exciting adventure. This is true because when God forgives and we enter a transforming relationship, all of life takes on a new direction. Jesus gave those two disciples an invitation. They wanted to know where Jesus was going. They asked, where are you staying? And Jesus answered, come and see. And they went with him. That makes life an exciting adventure. Jesus is always staying at the come and see place. He always calls us to come and see, to join him at the come and see place. The place which is unknown, but always filled with adventure. Jesus takes a band of sinners and makes them the church. He sends them out with the gospel message to believe it, to live it, to share it, to tell it, and to demonstrate it. He redirects our thinking. He gives us a new perspective on everything. He leads them and us to places that they and we have never been, to which are yet unknown. He calls forth from them and from us more than we ever knew was within us. He takes away sin by being the sinner's friend. Then, by dying for them, he makes them into messengers of the glad good news. He sends them out on an exciting adventure. They bring all the world under the influence of Christ. 
his gospel, his kingdom, and they allow it to seep into the far corners of humanity's existence so that nothing can escape it. Jesus calls us to this. Still, he is here to uphold us, to guide us, and to lead us as we serve God's kingdom. On a Sunday in the summer of 1945, a German bishop was preparing to preach. Nazi soldiers came and arrested him and put him in prison. He knew he might not come out of that prison alive. When they put him in a cell, he heard someone in another cell whistling the hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. And the bishop began to realize that he was not alone there in that cell. He knew the presence of Christ was with them, upholding them. With that knowledge, he would endure. It is in that faith that we know we are in the hands of a forgiving God, held up by a transforming relationship with Jesus, and led forward on an exciting adventure. In Jesus' name, amen. spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days God has spoken to us by the Son. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of rebirth, empower your church throughout the world to be a voice of hope for those who fear judgment or condemnation. Assure us of your faithfulness and give us confidence to proclaim your salvation for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, your spirit hovered over the waters and you called creation into being. Nurture and bless all signs of rebirth around us, budding trees and new shoots, thawing lakes and warm breezes, and animals awaking from hibernation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, lead the nations in your way of righteousness. Protect those who advocate for the needs of children, migrants, and victims of violence. Give courage to lawmakers, lawyers, judges, and law enforcement officers 
guiding them to do justice and to love mercy, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, give us a new vision of your healing power among us. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair. Bring mercy and relief to those who are injured, sick, or suffering. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, we thank you for the children of this community and for the people and ministries that care for them. Bless new and expectant parents. Console those who have lost children and those whose desire for children remains yet unfulfilled. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of rebirth, by wind and spirit, you call us into life renewed. We give you thanks for all your saints who have inherited your promises. Bring us with them into your everlasting kingdom. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Let us pray to our Father using the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your Spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. God, who fills the creation with abundance, Christ, who spreads his arms in forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit, who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>